God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. This is Robert Jenkins. This is a Friday, 5.30 afternoon. As always, me and my wife, like I take out your time to say thank you for all of your thumbs and your hearts, and we thank you for your support. We had some serious uh, internet difficulties yesterday, but I think we figured out what the problem uh, was, and then we're going to move on. So we thank you for just your patience and continually come on. Good to see you, Sister Brown. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. So as always, remember we are on Monday through Friday from 5.30 Central Time in New Orleans. Good to see you, Trina. And also we're on Facebook and we are on YouTube. Okay, and we're also on Instagram, Robert Jenkins 8877. You can look me up and find me there as well, okay? Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for everything. And remember, help us spread this word across the nation by sharing it on your page. While you're watching right now, you can hit that share button and share it on your page. Share it as many times as possible. If you know this word is meant for somebody in particular that you know, share that word. I, I, I just believe that God is trying to reach the nation through this word and also invite people out let them know that five days out of a week we are on Monday through Friday at 5 30 an hour at the most of your time take out the time and give God that so you can feed your soul just like in a natural you eat every day spiritually you need to eat every day it's so important so we thank God for that we thank you for coming good to see you Joyce Walls and God bless you we thank everybody um Make sure you also you sign up for the notifications so you can get notified when I am on in case God give me something um, that's not uh, tied to the set time. You will know that I'm, that I'm on, okay? So that's very important. Today we want to talk about part three. We're dealing with the responsibility of the light, but I'm titling this the call of the light, the, 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 the call or the cost of the light, the cost to bear it and to follow the light. Now this uh, particular teaching is going to be very uh, heavy, so put your boots on. We're going to walk into some depths of some things today. Uh, God has given me so much, and this is something that's very dear to me because of what I had to suffer and able to be what God called me to be. My life has uh, so much drama uh, tied to it from the time I was born, and uh, one day I'll release my book, and you'll get a chance to read about my life and just how much I've been through. I mean, I've been through almost anything you could talk about in life. I have experienced it. And, uh, and it's the cost that I had to pay in order to be who I am. And I had to learn to understand that cost and to accept the cost that God wanted me to, um, to pay. It's very important that we understand who we are in God. And um, the material is determined by the pressure. And sometimes God is using you in great, but you have to go through great in order to be great. And anybody who's highly anointed has been through trouble. You show me somebody who's been a blessing to somebody else, and I'll show you somebody who had to go through trouble to be able to release that type of oil and that type of anointing. There is a cost. Sometimes people are jealous of you, and I'm going to talk about that today. They're jealous of you when they see you on the stage and they see you, you know, with your wife and they see you with your husband or they see you with your kids or they see you on your job and they see you, you know, making good money. Sometimes they're jealous when they see you in the ministry, whether you're singing or, or praising God or, you know, preaching. But people don't know the story behind your anointing, you know, and sometimes we are envy of where people uh, are, but we're, we don't understand where they've been. To get there. And I tell people, uh, don't be jealous of the anointing. Uh, learn how to embrace the scars. There are many scars that goes behind uh, carrying the light of God. Uh, you are under attack just because you have a signature on your name. A lot of times the devil will attack you even before you even get a chance to release who you are. Uh, the devil will come through your children. He'll come through your parents. He'll come through your job even before you're not even all the way there yet. Some people are threatened and you haven't even had any signs of your greatness uh, I, I talked about the last time I talked about Joseph had to learn how to support Mary, but she wasn't even showing yet. But the angel came and said, there's something inside of her. And sometimes people are threatened even before you show. And you, you, you're not even all the way there yet. You're not even rich yet. You're not even carrying that level of anointing. But they see your light. And there's a cost you have to pay. And it's a painful thing when you uh, have went to a church and you look for people at that church to embrace you. Sometimes you look for people who have introduced it. Sometimes people who introduce you to God is the very people who turn against you once you grow in God. Sometimes it's the people who used to get a ride to church, and when you get your own car, they're jealous of your prosperity. This is the cost you have to pay. I had to pay a serious cost. Uh, sometimes the cost is people don't understand you. 
Sometimes what you have has never been seen before. What, what God has called you to do, the responsibility has never been done before. And some people will try to abort your journey with good intentions, like Peter, who tried to stop Jesus to go to Jerusalem because Jesus says, I got to go and I got to die. But sometimes people don't want you to suffer. Sometimes we, we, sometimes we're too close. Sometimes we have too many alignments. Sometimes we have false agreements and we don't understand that this is your cross that you must bear. Joseph, uh, you had a great dream, but you will be put in the, in, in the, in the uh, pit uh, by your own brothers. And they're going to lie to your dad and say that you're dead. Okay, and you're going to be and you're going to go from there and you're going to go to the prison and you're going to interpret dreams while you're locked up. This is the cost. And sometimes people don't understand there is a cost to be the anointed. There is there is courage that comes behind it. There is disappointed. And God allows a lot of things that happen to us to build character. So you must understand this cost. Uh, sometimes the cost is that God will let you be alone and, and you can't get nobody and you can't be successful in relationships. Uh, sometimes he won't let nobody understand you. Sometimes he won't let nobody even understand the way you think. And you have to handle the pay that cost that you have to be by yourself in your thinking, be by yourself in your ventures, be by yourself. Sometimes you have to step out of the boat and nobody else going to step out with you. Everybody sees that that's Jesus. Everybody heard him say, come, but you're going to be the only one that's willing to take that step. You can't be successful in God without being a risk taker. And it's a cost sometimes, because sometimes that cost, I'm going to talk about that as well, that sometimes you have to leave things behind. Sometimes you have to leave friends who've been with you all the time, but they can't go with you to the next level. And you, and that's a, that's, that's a cross you have to bear. Sometimes you have to be uh, stand against all odds. And sometimes you have to quote that scripture to yourself. If God be for me, he's more than a whole world against me. And there's sometimes the whole world will be against you. That is the cost you may have to bear. So I'm going to talk about the cost of the light today. And I want to walk through the word of God. So give me time. But there's a cost. And you have to know that it's worth it. You have to know that it's worth it. It is worth the call. You got to understand that what you're called to be, you know, it, many people want, want to be oil, but they don't want to be crushed. But you're going to have to be crushed, you know, and I, and I said it before and I'll say it again. You can go to the store, uh, you can go to Walmart or you can go to any convenience store and um, you can call yourself going to buy a bottle of uh, oil and they'll tell you the price and the price could be $3.27. But if you ask the tree, he'll tell you there's a difference between the cost and the price. The price is what they have tagged on it. But the cost is I had to go through all them seasons. I had to be cut down. I had to be put in fire. I had the pressure had to be applied to me. That's the cost. And sometimes people come to church and they hear you sing or they bless you with an offering to give you $10 or $100. They may, that may be a price that they offer you, but no one knows the cost of how many times you cried in the midnight hour. The cost of how many times you had to fight your flesh in order to have this level of anointing. The cost that it take that you had to be by yourself. I remember a time when God was calling me uh, to a place in my anointing and the cost that I had to pay. I, I was living with a lady one time and I was shacking up with her in, in Buffalo, New York. And I had to do a revival in Youngstown. And I remember when I got to Youngstown, I was complaining to God. I was so depressed in this situation. I was complaining to God to get me out of this situation. And when I got to Youngstown at that last night in the revival, God said, you want me to get you out? You want to stop? living wrong, you want to do what's right, you really want to be the best I call you to be, then don't go back to Buffalo. Now, I was living with a woman. She had a nice house. Uh, you know, wonderful things were there. We had nice cars. But God was saying, do you really want to pay the cost? And I remember sending them back to Buffalo and waving bye-bye to I had my band with me. I had musicians with me. But there was a cost I had to pay. And I remember staying with my cousin that night and didn't have a place to stay. And then God get, let me get a place the next day. And I remember suffering when many times the lights was off and no food in the cover. But there was a cost that God had to get me to, and he was building character, and I had to learn how to bless God when, when there was no food on the table, bless God when I'm waiting for maybe some income to come in so I can get my life back on, and things like that, and there's a cost to this light, and I'm telling you, anybody that you see that you may envy or maybe jealous or say, wow, man, you're doing a great thing, or you have no clue of the cost they had to pay if they really was in God. Many people had a role of the masses experience. God had to blind them. God had to take away their ego. There is a cost. I'm telling you, the woman at the well had to drop her water pot. There is a cost. Okay, Jonah found himself in the belly of a, of a whale because he, a cost had to be paid. You got to preach to people who don't want to hear you preach. 
There's a cost. And sometimes you lose friends on the way. Sometimes you lose finances. I mean, the challenge, sometimes you can't always sleep at night. Sometimes God bothers you and bothers you and bothers you. Some things you got to let go that you really like or you love, but there is a cost. And I'm telling you, to follow God, there is a cost. And I want to talk about that today. And you have to know of the price you have to pay and accept that, that somebody else will be blessed because you went through. Many people love the shade of a tree, but the tree had to go through every season, a winter, a, a summer, a fall, a spring. Sometimes the dog come by and, and, you know, and do his thing on the tree. Somebody kick the tree. Sometimes the tree get hit, but the tree has to have enough roots to stand all of that in order for somebody to come by one day and pick an apple off the tree. There is a cost you have to pay so that others can enjoy your fruit, that the tree itself never get a chance to enjoy its own fruit. Its whole purpose is to endure a season, go through what it has to go through in order for somebody else to be blessed. That's the cost you have to pay. Sometimes the cost, you got to love the unlovable. Sometimes you got to tell people you're sorry when they the one did you wrong. But that's the cost you have to pay. There's a cost for this light, okay? I've been talking about the call, but you got to understand the cost. And I'm going to show you that even through the scriptures. So give me time today and let's walk through this. The first thing I want to deal with is John chapter 3. Let's go to John chapter 3 and let's start with verse 19. Now, if you get a chance and I want you to become students of the word, I want you to read John chapter 3, the whole entire chapter. You should always understand the verse before something and the verse after it. But right now, we're not going to take all that time. But I want you to begin to become a student of the word because that's another cost. You can't say you want to be an apostle or you believe you called to be an apostle or a bishop or a pastor, but you don't want to pay the cost to get in that Bible. Okay, there's a cost. You got to study the scriptures. You got to know the scriptures. You got to understand proper interpretations of the scriptures. You have to be trained. You have to spend time with the Holy Ghost. You got to be a man of prayer. You can't, you full-time ministry, but you don't pray. You don't consecrate yourself. You got to cut some things loose. There is a cost. You can't do what everybody, what everybody else do. You might not be able to watch some TV shows. See, we got to get past some things and not be in a sin. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not expedient. There's some things that God's going to tell you not to do that are lawful, but God don't want you to do it. It's not expedient for you. You have to understand the cost of your anointing. You want to lay hands on the sick. You want to really be able to speak to those and have those recover and open up the blinded eyes. There's a cost. When Jesus talks about that in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me, you read verse 1 through 18 first. He was tempted of the devil. He had to be able to deal with those three temptations before he makes his statement out of Isaiah, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. We want to have the anointing. We want to have the business cards. We want to have gators. We want to have Mercedes Benz, but we don't want to pay the cost to labor, to intercede for people, to pray on your face to the point that you see what's coming next week because you spend time in prayer. There's a cost for this light. It ain't going to come because you got a collar around your neck, because you got a briefcase, or because you have a large building or a large congregation. No, there is a cost to have that anointing. There's a cost to be able to be in tune with God, to have a prophetic word from God. There's a cost for you to say you have an apostolic anointing. You can't just claim something you can't walk out. There's a cost. And I'm telling you, you see the greatest apostles, they had to go through. They had to forsake things. They had to drop their nets. They had to stop doing what was livelihood for them. Okay? They had to follow Jesus for three and a half years. Everybody want to have this cost, uh, want to have this right, but they don't want to walk with Jesus. You don't want to walk, you got to walk with him. You got to talk with him. You're going to lose some sleep. You're going to lose some friends. You're going to lose some close relationships. There is a cost for this light. I'm telling you what I know. And I'm telling you, it's a mandate on your life. And you got to know it. You got to accept it. And it's not, you're not going to have always great days. I'm telling you, some days you're going to cry. Some days you're going to want to quit. Some days you may quit and may have to come back out of retirement. I'm telling you, there is a cost because God is going to talk to you. He's going to shine a light on your life. You, sometimes we want to preach and tell people that they're wrong, but the cost is you got to be able to deal with your own uh, proclivities and your own sin. And you got to be honest with that. The light going to shine on you. It's a two-edged sword. God going to deal with you as well. Okay, and I'm telling you, it does a cost because you're gonna have to have some repentance. People want to have a light, but nobody wants to repent. I ain't talking about saying I'm sorry, I'm talking about godly sorrow to the point just tears to the point that you say, Woe is me, a man of unclean lips. There is a cost for it, okay? So important. But John chapter 3 starts out in verse 19. I'm gonna start there. 
It says, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. When you have made a choice or you have accepted the call of God on your life and you said you want to be a light, let me help you with something. You will not be light when you accept your real call. When you accept the call of a light, you're going to have more enemies than you have friends because your light that you shine brings condemnation to darkness automatically. It brings condemnation to the world. When you stop doing some things, people are not going to want to be comfortable around you because you bring embarrassment. You bring uh, uh, some type of conviction to their flesh. They want to have normal conversations, but when you really become the light, you bring condemnation. When the light came into the world, it brought condemnation to the world. And people, because of what your light brings in front of them, they're going to look for something on you. They're going to research your past. They're going to go through your profile. They're going to look on your page on Facebook. They're going to check you out on Twitter. They're going to search everything. They're going to try to meet somebody, make phone calls. If they can, they'll get your resume because you bring conviction to who there are because you made a stand as light. As long as you was laughing with them, joking with them, smoking with them, uh, having sex with them, playing with them, you can do that. But the minute you become the light, you bring condemnation. The Bible says, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. The world is upset when light stands up. And that's what we have to get back. The church is supposed to be a light. We're supposed to be a city that's set on a hill. We're supposed to be a light to the world. And the world will not embrace you. This is why I talked about how much poison in the church, because how can we bring a, be a light and bring condemnation when the world is embracing us? We dance like them, sing like them, using the same music that they're using. Come on, dressing like them in the house of God. No, you're supposed to be a light that you bring condemnation to the world, that they get upset. We have made partnership with the world. We have made partnership that we let us wear your clothes, let us dance like you, let us use your music, let us look like you, let us act like you, but let us say we still you'll say, no, you got to be light. When you become light, darkness will not embrace you. It gets upset for your stand and it looks for something. It's going, and I'm going to move on and tell you this, it's going to begin to hate you. You Listen, you can't be righteous and not be hated. You're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. I'm tired of people going through persecution because you want to make your own choices. I'm going through because you don't want to do the right thing. You're supposed to be persecuted for the right thing, not persecuted for the wrong thing. See what I'm saying? Well, where's the persecution because you didn't fall? Where's the persecution because you won't lie? Where's the persecution because you won't be doubtful? Where's the persecution because you won't bow? When's somebody going to put you in the fire furnace because you won't bow the bell? Uh huh. You got to talk to me now. That's so important. But when you become the light, you will find yourself in lion's den. You'll find yourself in fiery furnaces. You'll find yourself in prison, being locked up. When you become the light, they're going to whoop you. You're going to be shipwrecked. A snake will come out and try to bite you. I'm telling you, when you become the light, you bring condemnation. And that's the cost. I know you want to run from it. Some people have decided that they ain't going to pay the cost. They want to preach anyway, but they don't want to pay the cost. But I'm telling you, when you pay the cost, you're going to have people talk about you, lie on you, leave you. Everybody to hear you will not follow you. That's the cost you have to bear, okay? And you have to be excited about it and realize you have to count it all joy. See what I'm saying? You have to understand this is going to come your way. Many persecution of the righteous. The righteous is going to suffer. Jesus Christ was, cru was crucified. Come on, somebody. So Jesus Christ is going to be crucified and you have him in you then you're going to go through the same thing. And you have to accept it. Watch this, verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Listen, it ain't, it ain't personal. They don't want to be with you because they love darkness. They don't want to talk to you no more on the phone because they love darkness. I dare you to start shining in your conversation. I dare you to start shining in your attitude. I dare you to start shining in your stand, and you'll see how much they love darkness. They're going to cut you off. You ain't got to stop hanging with them. They're going to stop hanging with you. Just start being the light. Just start talking about God. When they call you, say, let's pray. Let, let's, let's have more prayer in our life. I notice that we don't pray like we, like we need to be because we're friends, because we are members at the same church. I'm telling you that you will, you will never see how much people love darkness until you decide to make a stand for light when you accept the cause because people love darkness rather than light. 
That's the truth. And people have a lot of talk, and they'll say, I'm saved, I'm sanctified. But when they come to you, really the light, you're going to find out how much they really love darkness. And I'm talking about preachers, bishops, apostles, pastors, teachers, I'm prophets. I don't care who you are. If you're not sold out to the light, you find out how much you still love darkness too that we're not honest with. And somebody got to shine a light and say, you still love pornography, but you want to preach. Oh, you still love drinking, but you want to prophesy. Oh, you still like gossiping, but you want to teach. No, you love darkness rather than light. And we got to become light and deal with the people that's going to lie on you, ostracize, put your name down. Why? Because you signing the truth. When light show up in the church, judgment going to show in the church. And all of a sudden, you ain't going to better get get, uh, get away with you, what you've been getting away with. Why? Because light going to say, oh, so you still love that. I see you still love to be egotistical. Oh, you still love to look good. Oh, you still love to talk about people. Because they love darkness rather than light. See, and that's the cost you got to pay to expose it and deal with the attack on your life because it is not you exposing it, it's you standing for God. You trying to live right yourself. But when you say yes to God, let me tell you, you expose a lot of no's. <laughs> okay, very true. And this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. You gonna when you stand and be the light, you may not like what you see, but you're gonna find out how so, how so many people have evil ways with a collar on, evil ways with profit in their mouth, evil ways with, with a great anointing on their life, evil ways, but they, they but they worshiper. They love the evil deeds, and you you would never saw it as long as you were just enjoying their singing and enjoying their preaching and enjoying their talking. But the minute you become light, you're gonna see some things that let me tell you something. If I didn't have have a real relationship with God, I would never go to church. I would never be. I've seen so much mess in church, it would make you leave God. But thank God my relationship was real with him because of the evil deeds that I saw. And everybody has a secret. I know your secret. You know my secret. You keep my secret. I keep your secret. Nobody shines a light. I won't shine a light on where your secret is. You don't shine a light on where my secret is. And guess what? We'll call ourselves friends. Oh, I will call myself. I'll let you be the pastor and I can be the members as long as you don't deal with my problem and I don't deal with yours. See them? Because where deeds are evil, but when light come up, light is going to expose where the evil deeds really are. I don't want you to preach to me, but you don't love your own kids. Uh-uh. No, no, no. I don't want you to preach to everybody else, but you don't even respect your own wife. No, we're going to deal with where your love really is when light shows up. Okay? It says this, so it says, because their deeds are evil. It's real simple. We don't hide in darkness. We're saved. We're hide in the light. We hide in exposure. If anything that's in darkness, the devil has a right and he has an access to. If it's something that you can't expose to God, then the devil has a right to wring your neck with it because it's in his territory. It's in darkness. But we claim we're saved. So we come out of darkness into the marvelous light. Let there be light. You will never get church in order. You'll never get uh, the five-fold ministry in order because we don't want to shine the light on what's out of order. We don't want to shine the light on where the evil deeds are. You love money, man of God. You love control, man of God, woman of God. You love to manipulate woman of God, and we don't want to shine the light, but there is a cost to bear this light. Okay, let's go on. For everyone that does evil, hate the light. So if you've been wondering why people don't like you, they don't even know you, uh, they're talking about you, they just met you, because they hate the light. Bottom line, it's in the word. I didn't make it up. They hate the light. And whenever you stand for the light, in the light, by the light, through the light, uh, over the light, under the light, any close by the light, you're going to see how much you are hated. The devils, the demons, going to come out of them, and they're going to start mocking you. They're going to start finding something on you, false accusations, because according to the scriptures, they hate the light. Let me read it again. But he that does, but uh, for everyone that does evil, what do they do, Bible? They hate the light. 
neither come to the light. That's why they don't come by. That's why you ain't got certain friends. That's why they don't call you, because we ain't coming, because too much light when I call you. You want to pray too much. You want to speak in tongues. You want to talk about with God. You want to know how I'm doing. Hey, am I still done with pornography? You want to ask about my sexual life. You want to wonder if I'm still gossiping. You won't let me cuss when I'm around you. So I don't want to call you no more, and I'm not coming over, because I love darkness rather than light, and I'm not coming. So according to scripture, let's read it again in verse 20. And everyone that does evil hate the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. I don't want you to see what I'm doing in the dark. I don't want you to know that I'm not as sanctified as I like to be. I don't want you to know that I still got one foot in the other and one on one side and one on the other. I don't want you to know that you know what I still struggle. I don't want you to know there's, there's some things that I don't struggle with. I submit. I don't want you to know my private life because it's in darkness. I worship God on Sundays in the light and I worship the devil the rest of the week in the darkness. I don't want you to know that I like Kurt Franklin, but I also like Frankie Beverly. I don't want you to know that I like Kool-Aid, but I also like Crown Royal. I don't want you to know that I'll say praise God, but I'll also say some other words. I don't want you to know that. You know what? Because when I'm around you, you reprove me. I can't hide, but your light is too bright. When I'm around you, I start feeling like I'm not right. And all of a sudden, I'm, I may want to repent. Uh, you messed me up because I was going to drink, but I got with you. Now, now I wonder, can I get a drink? Oh, I can't call you because I know I'm going over that guy's house. And if I get with you, you're going to want to pray and read the scriptures. And you will mess up my sex tonight. The truth of the matter is they don't want to be around the light because it reproves what has not been exposed to God. And I'm telling you, because you've been called to bear light, that's the cost. So you may say, I've got in God and I don't have many friends. That's the cost. Uh, people don't spend time with me. That's the cost. Uh, they don't want to talk about God around me. That's the cost. I can't get a godly conversation on the phone. That's the cost of the light. Woo! Okay. Let's move to uh, the next word. Let's go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We just left John uh, chapter 3. Let's go to John chapter 1. Watch this. And we're going to start from verse 1, okay? We, we expose today because you got to know the cost. You got to quit getting upset, quit crying while people don't spend time with you, while you ain't got no friends, while you can't find nobody, while you can't find no right church because you got too much light. Oh, we, we can't have you part of the committee. They don't want you part of the committee. They vote everybody else but you because you bring too much light. When you show up at the committee, you want to know where the money goes and what the pastor doing and why his wife don't never come and why his kids is dressing so bad and he dressing so good. No, you, we can't let you be in the church. You, you ask too many questions. You raise your hand too many times in Bible study. Oh, uh, We can't tell you whatever we want to tell you. We can't manipulate you because you the light. Oh, you in prayer too much. We can't give you the program because you already know God. So we would rather that you leave and then we're going to talk about you when you leave and we're going to tell everybody not to hang around you when you leave because we got to make you everybody else think that you really wasn't the light you was it's real talk i lived it i'm talking about what i lived okay watch this uh john chapter one in the beginning was the word you can't understand the light if you don't know the word of god the cost is you got to spend time with the word you got to spend time with the written word you got to spend time with the rainbow word you got to spend time with the word because your light has to become flesh and you can't become flesh out of your flesh. It got to become flesh out of your spirit. So you got to have it in the word. You don't even know how to shine. You don't know how to love. You don't know how to endure. You don't know how to do these things unless you spend time in the word. That's the cost. That's the cost. You got to spend time in it. So in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, the reason why they're so powerful, because whenever you know the rhema word of God, you can't be manipulated, you can't be fooled, because you can hear the voice. Now, you notice that it says here, in the beginning was the word. It doesn't say in the beginning was the Bible. Before there was a Bible, there was a word. Because the first Bible is written based upon what God has spoke already from the spoken word. So when people understand the spoken word of God, people don't like you because you know too much 
much about God from a rhema. You spend time with God. You hear the voice of God. Even when you can't find it in the scriptures, some of your spirit say, that's not right. Even when you can't architect or articulate it, you can say something ain't right about his spirit because you spend time with the spoken word in the beginning. I'm not talking about you got to know every 66 books and you got to know uh, the, the Hebrew and the Greek. I'm saying spend time with the rhema word. This word word here, the original translation is in the beginning was a rhema word, not the written word. Moses didn't have a Bible, but he didn't have a word. I have heard the voice of the Lord God. When you can hear the voice of the Lord word God that comes through the word. Now this is not anti-Bible. This is just say that people who spend time with God is going to learn the Bible. You're going to know the written word, the rhema word. You're going to know the script. You're going to know it all and it's all going to agree so that you can be the light. Many people have been fooled because you won't spend enough time with God to know counterfeit. But when you spend time with the word and the word is in you as you might not, you know, might not sin against God, then you can hear something is wrong. Something may right. Uh, there's something going on. It's the wrong spirit in here, and you can detect it, and that's the cause. That's the cause. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You got to become one with the Word so that you can shine. Okay? Very key. God is releasing His Word. It's not you. It's the Word. When the devil looks in you, he only fears what you carry. When he sees the word in you, that's when, he, that's when he has to go. Even Jesus, when he dealt with the devil, he said, it is written. He used the word. You got to become, you got to pay the cost to spend time with the word, with God. So when you deal with the devil, you fight him uh, uh, properly. You have a spiritual strategy to deal with these principalities in his power because the word is in you. You full of the word. You rich of the word. You walk in the word. And you become the light. Watch this. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. And was not anything made that was made. So if it was made, it was made by the word. Woo! Watch this. In him was life. In him was life. Because he had the word in him, the word is life. Your life is based upon the word. The spoken word and the written word. And watch this. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. What, what, what is your, where is your light coming from? If, we, if somebody said, what is that light? That light should be your life and your life should be the word. Now, that's the cost because the cost is I got to spend time with the word because if I don't spend time with the word, I'll never have my life together. You can't get your life together outside of the word. You say, I want to do right. I want to change. You don't spend enough time with the word to change because in the word comes life. And out of the life, when you have the light of the word, you become the light of men. You want to shine in dark places. You want to make a difference in a demonic atmosphere. Get full of the word. And when you... Anybody who's full of the word, their life should change. Uh-oh. That's why I question people who can articulate the word, but they don't have a change of life. Something is wrong. You Somewhere the light is not shining because the word should shine a light in your life to tell you as much as you preach you off, as much as you tell everybody else, you don't never deal with yourself. No, because when the word becomes in you, it starts shining a light and your life changed. And when your life changed, then you become the light of men. Oh my God, did you hear that? That's the cost. I, I don't want to be another preacher who just can preach and articulate the word. I want the word to come out of my life. I want the word to work on Tuesdays, Friday at 3 o'clock in the morning, or Wednesday, 7 o'clock in the evening. You, you get tired of the word only works on Sunday from 11 to 1. It only works on Wednesday from Bible study. No, I want the word to work when the lady at McDonald's is winking at me. No, you can wrong wink because I'm going to tell you about Jesus because I got so much word in me that it keeps me at McDonald's. McDonald's, at Walmart, at the mall. No, I need that kind of word in my life so my life can become the light of men. We're not becoming the light of men because our life is not right, and our life is not right because you ain't really spending time with the word. Don't tell me you know that much Bible and you still nasty, arrogant, egotistical, lie, doubtful, controlling, witchcraft, Jezebel, Ahab, something's not right because when the word becomes, it becomes your life and your life become the light of men. That's the cause. 
I can never think I can get myself together outside of this world. I can never deal with the principalities outside of this world. I can never overcome all the things that's been passed down through my mother, through my father, through my culture, through my religion. I can never overcome it if I don't spend time in the world. I'll be lying, confessing, and never see a change. Never see a change. Hope has become a strategy instead of the answer. Hope should be in Jesus Christ, not hoping there's something that you're not willing to make a change in your life because you don't have enough word to deal with that principality in you. But let me tell you, try to keep lying and read Psalms every day. Try to keep uh, controlling people and spending time in prayer. I'm telling you, a battle will come and you'll find yourself like Paul. I'm wrestling. There's another law in my member bringing me into captivity, but I don't know how to battle that because I have enough work. You losing the battle because you ain't got nobody fighting on your behalf. When you read in Revelation, when, when, when the enemy came, he said he saw somebody riding a horse and he had a sword in his hand. And when he got closer, he said, and there was something written on the thigh of the person riding the horse. And, and on the thigh, he said, and it was the word of God. The word of God is like a horse that comes out of your mouth that galleys with a sword in his hand. And when Principality shows up against you, that word comes in and cut it all down in the name of Jesus. That's so important. So important. Okay? That is so important. All right. Okay, let's get back to this. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness. When you get the word, the word becomes life. The light becomes the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. This is the cause. This is the cause. You're going to have to shine in places where they're doing some terrible things. God has seen you to the church and the whole church is jacked up. Because light shines in darkness. Put you in a family and everybody in the witchcraft. Light shines in darkness. You can't get upset with the assignment when you have the light. So important. Okay? And the light shines in darkness. But guess what? And darkness comprehends it not. Now we're going to walk a little heavy. When you shine in darkness, quit looking for them to agree with you. Quit looking for approval. Quit looking for them to say, man, I thank God for you. No, they can't comprehend. They, don't, they can't comprehend why their spirit is being bothered by your presence. They can't comprehend why they can't get you to bow. They can't comprehend why uh, uh, something is going on on the inside of him because darkness can't comprehend light. We're looking for approval from darkness. We want darkness to say, come on, dark, preach. Darkness can't tell me to preach. Darkness can't identify and say, you are anointed. No, you can't comprehend the light that I have. Oh, all you know is that you've been exposed. You don't have any idea who I am. You don't have any idea what I carry. You don't have any idea of the anointing of my life because you darkness, it comprehends it not. I've been sent to expose the atmosphere that has kept you blind. Oh, you don't like it. How many when I was growing up, when you got sick and you had to take something called penicillin? Penicillin don't taste good. Oh, it's hard to swallow. It's nasty. But guess what? It get rid of the disease. Light comes in and it's nasty. They can't comprehend it. You want them to, you want them to, you want darkness to just to support your ministry. You want them to say, well done. You want them to say, man, keep doing what you're doing. They can't comprehend it. That's the cost to do something to set people free. They can't even comprehend what you're doing. They have no idea of the principalities you're tearing down. They have no idea of how many are being set free. They have no idea that surgery is going on. They All they know is that you know what you is messing up our church. You're messing up our family. You're messing up my doctrine. You're messing up what I used to believe. Oh, you're making me rethink some things. Yes, you can't comprehend it. And my job is not to get upset 